the Lord. This is our intercessory prayer. Glory be to God. Amen. We ask that everyone would stand. Amen. And enter in. Amen. Let's enter in the presence of the Lord. Yes. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. We love him. We adore him. Yes. We worship him. We praise him. There is none like him in all of the earth. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you on this morning for blessing us to see another day. A day that we have not seen before. Father, we thank you for looking down upon us with a tender heart of compassion, a tender heart of mercy, touching us with the finger of love, raising us up once again. Father, you raised us up to do a work for you. It was no goodness of our own, but God, you've given us another chance to tell you thank you. You've given us another chance, oh God, to get it right. You've given us another chance to repent. God, we don't take it lightly. We say thank you on this morning. We say that we love you. We, we thank you, Lord, for being our God. We, we, our hearts are soft before you on this morning. Our hearts are not hard. Our head is not turned away from you on today, God. We are, we are turned towards you. God, we thank you for using your shepherd brook, your shepherd hook, and constantly pulling us back in alignment with your word. God, we thank you, God, for chastising us because you love us. God, we thank you for bringing correction to us because you love us. We thank you, God, that your love does not waver. We thank you that your love does not change. Father, we thank you, God, for your healing power. We thank you for the manifestation of your healing on today. God, we thank you, God, for the power of your forgiveness. We thank you, Lord, for your tender mercies. We thank you, God, for your compassion, God, that you show towards us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this service. We thank you for how you're going to move in this service. God, we thank you for walking through this place and moving through this place and touching hearts and touching minds. God, I don't know the situations of your people, but God, you do. God, you are omniscient and you are omnipresent. You are everywhere at the same time and you are all-knowing. God, search from heart to heart. Search from mind to mind. God, every situation, every circumstance, you are more than able to turn it around. God, we speak, God, to every person walking through the door today. God, we speak in the name of Jesus. God, that they would not come out the same way that they came in. In the name of Jesus. Anyone come in sick, God, we speak that they'll go out healed. Anyone come in heavy laden, God, we speak, God, that they'll go out light. In the name of Jesus. God, give answers today. God, God revealed the solution today. Turn things around today. Change hearts and minds today. Save souls today. Fill somebody with the Holy Ghost today. In the name of Jesus. God, somebody's coming to you for one thing. Somebody's coming to you for something else. But God, you are a great big God. God, we have many different problems. But God, you are the problem solver of all of them. There is nothing that's too hard for you. You can do anything but fail. You can do anything but tell a lie. We thank you for being our God. We love serving you. We love worshiping you. We love praising you. We we love loving on you. God, we thank you today. God, we thank you, Father, for changing hearts. We thank you for changing minds. Thank you for changing perspectives. Thank you for changing the way we think. God, thank you for changing the way we speak. Thank you, God, for changing our behavior. God, thank you for changing, God, our mentality. We come against every generational curse, every ancestral curse. In the name of Jesus, we send it back to the pits of hell from where it came from. And we lose generational blessings. We lose the blessings of God upon our lives. In the name of Jesus, for we have the blood of Christ running through our DNA. We thank you for the blood. 
blood. Oh God, because of the blood, we're already healed. Because of the blood, we're already set free. Because of the blood, we're already delivered. Thank you for the blood today. God, while we have your attention, we pray for the families that are in bereavement today. God, we pray for the Hayward family. God, we pray that you would look down upon them today. And God, we pray that you would comfort them as only you can. Comfort them, oh God. Show them that you're there. Wrap them in your arms, oh God, and show them your love. God, show, God, save those today in that funeral who are unsaved. God, let it not just be another memorial, but God, let it be a revival. In the name of Jesus, touch the speaker. God, send a word, God, that would change hearts and minds in that service. In the name of Jesus, God, because this is what Sister Jane would want. She would want revival at her home going celebration. So God, do it for her. In the name of Jesus, God, send a word of conviction. God, send a word of repentance. God, let fire come from the preacher's mouth. Every person that touches the mic, God, let your anointing be upon them in an unusual way. Let fire run through that place. Holy Ghost fire, like it's never run through it before. In the name of Jesus, God, save healed and set free in that service today in the name of Jesus and God we thank you for doing it now and God we pray we pray for Bishop Alfred Williams family God we pray for them today we pray for his wife we pray for the children we pray for the church family God that you would comfort them and that you would be for me with them we pray oh God for, for Bishop Alan Simmons and Lady Chad God in the sounds of praise family. God, that you would comfort them and be with them, God, during this difficult time. It is, it is in Jesus' name that we pray, and we say thank you. Come on, put your hands together and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Into the hands of our presiding. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, put those hands together right there. Yeah, yeah. Put your hands together for an awesome God. Come on. Do we, do we not serve an awesome God on today? Come on. Is He the God that woke us up on this morning? Come on. Is He the God that keeps our mind in the right place at all times? In the name of Jesus, don't be distracted. In the name of Jesus, come on. Is it not God that woke us up yet another day? Come on. Can we put our hands together for that right there? Come on, is he still the God who heals you? Is he still the God who delivers you? Come on, is he still the God who is the way maker when there is no way? Come on, hallelujah. We need to focus on God. Come on, focus on God. Shut your mind on God. We, we get so caught up in focusing on people. Come on, but we got to focus on God. Hallelujah. The people can't save you. Hallelujah. The people cannot save you. It is God who saves you. It is God who delivers. It is Christ who can get you out of that dark place. Not a person. We can't make people our gods. Come on. We've got to worship the Lord. Come on. Put your hands together. If God is still your God. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord Jesus. Come on. There are many that didn't wake up today. Come on. But look at how blessed we are. Come on, we made it another day. Come on, the Lord has woke us up another day. Come on, we can't take any credit for what God has done. Lord, I don't want to take any credit for what you have done in the name of Jesus. Father, I give you all the praise right now. Hallelujah. Father, if it had not been for you, come on, where would I be? Come on, that's the question that we need to ask ourselves. If it was not for God, come on, where would I be? Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Come on, we can do better than that. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Lord, I thank you. I can't do it without you, God. Thank you, Father. In the middle of the night, you wake me up with your word, and I say, Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. I'm able to sleep at night. Come on. Because of the presence of God. Father, I thank you for rest. 
Hallelujah. Is anybody need rest on today? Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Thank you for giving rest to my spirit. Rest to my mind. Hallelujah. He is an awesome God. Put your hands together like this. Yes. Coming before us now, we're going to have Pastor come before us with the scripture. Hallelujah. And then after that, we're going to praise and worship. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And God bless you. God bless you. God bless you on today. We praise God for this day. We praise Him for this time. Yes, yes Lord. Uh, Thank you, Lord. Often reminded of His goodness, yes. of His mercy, and His grace. Undeserving, but oh, God. still afforded yes. unto yes. us. And yes. I'm, I'm grateful unto that. Never yes. take it for granted. Amen. Yes. Amen. One of the songwriters said, I never would have made it. Never would have made it. Amen. Without, you, without God on my Lord. side. Amen. I want to call your attention in our scripture reading to you. Uh, prophet Isaiah chapter 6 uh, beginning reading at verse number 1 that's Isaiah chapter 6 let's pick up reading at verse number 1 uh, Christian standard Bible read as thus that's Isaiah chapter 6 starting at verse number 1 uh, in the year that King Uzziah died I saw the Lord seated on a high and lofty yeah. throne Thank you, Lord. and the hem of his robe filled the temple Seraphims were standing above him. They each had six wings. With two they covered their face, with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another, Holy, holy, holy yes. is the Lord of armies. Yes. His glory filled the whole earth. Thank you, the foundation of the doorways shook at the sound of their voice. Yes. And the temple was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, for I am ruined, because I am a man of unclean lips, and live among people of unclean lips. And because my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of armies, then one of the seraphims flew to me, and in his hand was a glowing coal, and he, he has taken from the altar his tongues. He touched my mouth with it and said, now this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is removed, and your sin is atoned for. Yes. Then I heard the voice of the Lord asking, Who should I send? Who will go for us? I said, Here I am. Send me. That's Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. Yes. God bless you continuously. Hallelujah. Can we put our hands together for the word right there? Come on. Can we put our hands together for the word of God? As our praise and worship we just come forward. Uh, here I am, send me. Is that anybody's testimony on tonight? Come on. Yes. 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 God is a good, good father. Yes, yes, thank you, Lord. Come on, come on. How many of you know that God is a good, good father? Thank yes, you, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. And he is perfect in all of his ways. Yes, yes. he is. Not just some of them, but all of his ways. Yes, yes Lord. All of his ways. Yes, Lord. Has he been good to you today? Yes, he yes, has. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord.
Amen. Phenomenal job. Amen. And to you, 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 and you, God's people, God bless you. Amen. 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 And to our wonderful cousin visiting with us. Amen. For the second Sunday in a row, we say God bless you. Amen. You made our atmosphere even better because you're here. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. You may take your seat to the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Turn with me in your Bibles to John chapter 5. Amen. We're going to push just a little bit. Amen. Because uh, we do have a funeral this afternoon to go to. Amen. For those of you who weren't here during intercessory prayer, we solicit your prayers for the Hayward family. Yes. Amen. In QG, South Carolina, just found out the news this morning about... Um, he was my bishop when I was a part of Sounds of Praise, amen, and I, I loved him dearly, and I still do, amen. Uh, bishop Alfred E. Williams um, transitioned, went home to be with the Lord, amen. So my prayers go out to his wife yes. and, and their family, the church family on this morning, such a jewel, kind-hearted oh, yes, man, yes, yes. Oh, yes. amen, teacher of the gospel, Praise God. amen. Yes. So uh, well respected in the kingdom, Amen. So um, my heart is a little bit heavy. So y'all pray for me and, and pray for their family on this morning. I, I you know, I, I wish people would hold off on some messages before service, especially when they know that you have church, and be a little bit more mindful of that. But um, we, we pray for the family on this morning that God would just lift them up and, and encourage them and hold them. In his arms is only yes, he can. Only. Yes, he Amen. John chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. John chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. I heard Pastor giggle a little bit when I said John chapter 5, so I guess I'm where he was. Amen. Yeah, bless your heart. Amen. Amen when you have it. Yes. <laughs> Sister uh, Cherie's wearing one of my favorite colors this morning, so I'm going to keep my eyes Beautiful. on her. <laughs> she is. Yes. Amen. And it reads, after this, a Jewish festival took place and Jesus went up to Jerusalem by the Sheep Gate. In Jerusalem there is a pool called Bethesda uh -huh. and Aramaic, Aramaic. Once again, someone just walked in. We're coming from John chapter 5 verses 1 through 9. John chapter 5, verses 1 through 9, yes. which has five colonnades. Within these lay a large number of the disabled. In some translations, it says invalid or invalid, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been disabled for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and realized he had already been there a long time, he said to him, do you want to get well? Sir, the disabled man answered, I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up, but while I'm coming, someone goes down ahead of me. Get up, Jesus told him, yes. pick up your mat and walk. Instantly, the man got well, Instantly, picked yes. up his mat, and started to walk. Topic on this morning is, do you want to be well? Yeah, Come on. Yeah, amen. Look at your neighbor and look them in the eye and say, do you want to be well? Do you want, do you to, be want well? to be well? Yes. 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 That is amen. the question. Yes. Yes. I, I, I didn't see everybody lift up their head. I need you to look at that one in the back and ask the question. Do you want to be well? Do you want to be well? Do you want to be well? Do you want to be? Because yes, yes. everybody needs to be asking everybody. Yes, Amen. Yes, yes, There's power yes, yes. when we speak. That's yes, why yes, that's right. we tell each other to speak and Life say it. Amen. 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 Yes. Do you want to be well? That is the yes, question. question. Yes. Amen. Matter of fact, why don't y'all move up a little bit? Yeah, come yes, right here behind me. Amen. Come on, right here. Come on. A Amen. 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 Do you want to be well? Glory be to God. That is the question because we, 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 um, come on up. Amen. Let's move. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Many people say that they want to be well, and I'm not talking about just a physical illness. That's right. 
I'm talking about a spiritual. I'm talking about financial. I'm talking about emotional. I'm talking about mental. I'm talking about in every capacity, do you want to be well? I'm talking about marital. I'm talking about friendships, Lord, parental. I'm talking about in the church, do, do you want to be well? There is a, a thing where people actually get a thrill out of being sick. Oh yes, oh yes. Come on, that's oh, yes. right. That's right. That is right. They get a thrill out of having you ask them how you're doing today, and they have a list of problems and a list of things that's wrong. That's a mental illness yes. called hypochondria. It's an illness or, a, or an anxiety disorder. It's a chronic mental illness. It's a persistent fear that they have a serious or life-threatening illness where they thrive on telling you, oh, my head hurts, or this hurt, or my wrist hurt, yes, or Lord. this is wrong, or that's wrong. And, and they just want to, to have the attention. Attention, attention, yes. yes. And if something's not wrong, then something's wrong. It's wrong, yes, 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 either way. Amen. They're not at peace if something's not wrong. Oh, Jesus. That's right. That's a mental illness. They don't want to get well because being well would be wrong for them. Are you following me? Come on. Amen. So this is why Jesus asked, do you want to get well? Because some people have been in the situation so long because that's where they want to be. Yes, yes, yes. That's real. Comfortable right there, yes. Remind me of the first name again. Forgive me. Dolores. To thank, thank you, Cousin Dolores. Some people are there because that's where they want to be. And listen, I know this is nobody in here, but Sister Whitney, the Lord just sat this right on my shoulder. Yes, this must Lord. be for somebody on Facebook. But this is why I, I, when I talk to single women, Sister Cherie, about relationships, and they tell me they're dating a married man. Ooh, come Sandy, on, come on Sandy why is he taking me here? I mean, he literally just put, it's not in my notes, it's not in my notes. And we got to go, but the Lord just put this on me. And, I, and, and they tell me they're dating a married man. And I say to them, and they say, but you know, he's there because of the kids. And, but you know, he's there because of this. And he's, no, he's there because that's what he want to be. That's right. That's right. Amen. He didn't leave because he didn't want to leave. Come on. Because. Because when I was in my situation, I left because I wanted to leave. I, it was t I realized it was time for me to go when I packed my bags and I, I packed my boxes and I, I hit the exit and I left. With money or no money and two daughters behind me, I left. He, he's a man. He's there because that's where he wants to be. That's an excuse. All right, I'm going to go on with my message. So do you want to be well? There's another term called the Munchausen syndrome. Well, We're still talking about it all starts in the mind. Amen. The Munchausen syndrome, M-U-N-C-H-A-U-S-E-N. M-U-N-C-H-A-U-S-E-N. S-E-N. Munchausen syndrome. It's a psychological condition where someone pretends to be ill or de deliberately produces symptoms of illnesses in themselves. Their main intention is to assume the sick role so that people care for them and they're the center of attention. Mm -hmm. oh, well, yeah, Let me tell you how powerful this is, men. Let me help the men. This is so powerful that a woman can convince herself that she's pregnant and her body will begin to react as if it is. Wow. Her body will stop producing its menstrual. 
her stomach will begin to protrude. She'll be nauseated in the mornings. She'll have cravings. All because the mind says, I'm pregnant. So the body reacts. That's right, honey. It's a focus. This is what ESP and, and all of these things are, where you can cause a jar to move off of the table because of the mind. You see how, how powerful the mind is? When the mind can move something? <laughs> yeah. Metaphysics. Yes, yes. Metaphysics. Thank you, sir. Th this is how powerful the mind is. This is why Jesus asked him, do you want to be well? Do you want to be well, Lord Jesus? Because he had been at this pool for 38 years. Can I take my time just for a little bit? 38 years he had been sitting by the pool of Bethesda. And the thing is that I want you to understand is Jesus is all-knowing. He already knew the answer before he asked the question. And this was a yes or no question. It did not require a long sentence. Jesus said, do you want to be made well? He could have said, what? Yes? Yes, no. Right. Or no. Right. But what he gave was an excuse. Yeah, yeah. This is how you know people have a mental or spiritual or emotional illness. Because instead of answering what's asked, they give an excuse. That's it. That's it. They push off what's really before them. Yes, yes. Oh, come on. Because they don't want to deal with what's really in front of them. And then when you say no, we're not no, let's back up. Let we gonna deal with this. It's no, 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 you're trying to deflate. No, we're gonna deal with what was just said. We don't want to deal with what was just said. Because we want to push that to the side. Lord Jesus. But when we deal with the root of the problem, see, we're starting, it all starts in the mind. In the mind. Help us. He could have scooted to the pool if he couldn't walk. That's right. He could have, he could have waved his hand. His mouth was working. In 38 years, nobody had enough compassion. You couldn't write a note and ask somebody to put you in the pool. Help you get there. That's right. I refuse to believe that in 38 years, nobody, no priest, no good Samaritan, nobody offered to help him get into the pool. I refuse to believe that. Lord Jesus. That's why Jesus asked him, do you want to be made well? Basically, how long do you plan to be in this place? Come on. Why are you standing in that position? Amen. How long do you plan to be here? When are you going to shift your mindset that I'm not going to be ill anymore? I'm not going to deal with this anymore. I'm, come on, I'm tired of being in poverty. I'm, I'm tired of taking medication. I'm tired of being sad. I'm, I'm tired of being depressed. I'm tired of being lonely. I'm tired of going without. I'm tired of, of being in grief. I'm tired of dealing with what I'm dealing with. It's time for me to be put in the pool of Bethesda. Amen. I want to get well. Because for somebody who wants to get well, the answer is not going to be a long sentence. The answer is going to be yes. Say prove it, preacher. Let a multimillionaire walk in here right now and say to you, do you want money? Your answer is not going to be, well, I didn't have anybody to take me to the bank. Your answer is going to be yes. Amen. That's right. Yes, Lord. Amen. Well, I've been struggling all my life. No, yes. Yes, and I'm ready, Lord. Amen. 
You're not going to have an excuse for why you don't have money right now. Your answer is going to be yes. My husband says, if you've got good sense, you got good sense, you say yes. Your answer is just going to be yes without the excuse. He had the excuse because he really didn't want to be made well. That's why it was 38 years. He said it right here. He said, uh, he said, I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I'm coming, someone goes down ahead of me. Always in the way. <laughs> My God. What scripture says, we have not because we, did he ask someone? We went there, but we can make the assumption in 38 years, two men could have lifted him up and said, come on, we're going in together. I refuse to believe that the people of this time were that evil that they would not have helped him. Because I'm sure they heard about the man at the pool of Bethesda that was sitting there. I'm, per, I'm even sure that people came by and offered. But he probably refused. My God. Yeah. You heard the story of the man sitting on the roof when the storm came. And Jesus, he, he was praying for the Lord to send help. And someone came on the boat. But he said, no, I'm praying for the Lord to send help. Oh, and someone came on with a helicopter. And he said, no, I'm praying for the Lord to send help. And then someone else came with a rowboat. And he said, no, I'm praying for the Lord to send help. Lord Jesus. Help kept coming. But he kept rejecting the help. What? What? Uh, Proverbs says a fool rejects instruction. instruction. Yes. I, I, I talked to my uncle Alonzo this week and he said something to me that was so powerful. It reminded me of a message that Pastor spoke years ago. He said, before destruction comes, the Lord sends instruction. That's right. Yes. This is what my uncle said to me this week. And I said, Pastor, preach that years ago at the Purple Church. Be before destruction comes, Always God sends instruction. Yeah. D destruction came, but the man stayed and God sent help, but he sat there. And even when God was merciful enough to send more help, he still refused to move. What keeps us in place when help is coming time and time again, but we refuse to move? Come on. Well, that you. word that starts with a P but ends with an E. Amen. Pride. Pride, yes. Yes. Pride comes before fall. Pride will keep you stuck in a place of being unhealed. Pride will keep you stuck in a place of getting what you need to get because your mindset says, don't move. Your mindset says to you, oh, I, well, I know Sister Cherie has what I need, but I don't want it to come from her. Pride says, oh, I know True Light has what I need at that ministry, and I'm not getting it over here, but I don't want to go to that church. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because they don't have over 100 people, so I don't, I don't want to get it there. They're not in a big brick building with a high steeple. They're in a hotel right now, but they got the word, but I don't want to get it there, so I'm just going to stay right here and, and suffer from that's Sunday it. to that's Sunday it. That's it. and get some good quiet singing, and that's it. But I'm not going to really get the word. And I'll just watch online. The mind of people. Yes, Lord. The Foolishness. Mind. That's right. And so you stay stuck. We stay stuck. And God said that all of the answers of the Lord are yes and amen in him. And all of the answers are right here. He told Moses, what is that that you have in your hand? He gave him the answers, but he wasn't using it. Gave him the tool, but he wasn't using it. He was right at the brink of the answer, sitting right at the pool, but wasn't making any moves to get into the water. 
This is the same synopsis of being able to lead the horse to the water, but you can't make them drink. It's the most frustrating thing for a leader and for a parent. That's right. When the answer's right in front of the parishioners, right in front of the children, and you leave them there, and you want to push their head into the water, but you can't make them drink. Can't make them. What is it that stops us from getting it? When God has so much for us. So much, so much. But we sit there when we make excuse after excuse. Matthew 5 and 37 says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. And Jesus was, uh, on many jobs, you take a personality test. And, and with the personality test, colors represent your personality. And on most jobs, red means direct. Jesus was definitely red. He was direct. And, and, and for Jesus, yes. I'm surprised yes. he didn't shut him down and say, I didn't ask you all of that. It's yes. a yes, yes or no. Yes, sir. You let your yes be yes and your no be no. You can't want to be healed today, but then on Monday you're crying that you're sick again. Come on. You're complaining about the same issue again. What is it that keeps pulling you on this emotional, mental, financial, spiritual roller coaster where you're up today and you're down tomorrow? He said you've got to keep your mind stayed on him so that you be in perfect peace. We want to be, we want to have our mind on Jesus part time every now and then maybe five minutes a day maybe two minutes a day no baby you've got to park your mind it's got to stay on jesus tell somebody all the time all the time we have so many resources now. There's no reason for you to be dealing with the things mentally and emotionally that you're dealing with. There's no reason for you to be depressed now. There Lord, help us. Come on, help us, help There's too many resources. You don't even have to leave your house. That's right. Help us, Lord. I was talking uh, uh, to our friend, the apostle, this week, and, and I said, don't you know you can go on YouTube now and you can go, go to scriptures for sleep. That's right. And it'll play for 8 to 11 hours and black out your TV screen. And all it does is, is play the scriptures for you. That's it. With the waterfall in the, in the background and you sleep. So all you hear is scriptures in your spirit while you sleep. Yes, sir, yes, that, yes, sir. That's an example of keeping your yes, sir, mind yes, 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 yes. stayed on him. You're working in the office. You can have that played in the background on your phone instead of you listening to this crazy office gossip or secular music. You don't have to listen to the gospel songs. You can have the scripture just going in. If you're not a reader, come on. It, the, the scripture can be played. You work eight hours. It could just be played on YouTube. And that way your spirit is calm. Yes, yes, yes. Well, why are you in such a good mood? Yes. You might not even realize it, but the scripture just played, and then you come to church, and the, the preacher's preaching, and you rattle it off the scripture right with them, and you're like, man, I didn't even realize I knew that scripture. Why? Because you were hearing it over and over again. So the scripture has become a melody to you, just like you remember the songs, just like you remember Big Daddy Kane and LL Cool J and all this stuff. Now you remember the scripture like a song, because this is a song. Yes. Now you you remember now you're able to hide it in your heart. Because this is how we fight, y'all. You can't fight with your words. You're real smart and you can put some real cool stuff together, but your words is not it. You have to fight with the word of God. 
This is your weapon. This is your sword and your shield. This is how you fight your battles. This is how you fight your mental battles, your emotional battles, your financial battles, your sickness, whatever it is. This is how you fight. Help us. Yes, yes, yes. Help us. You have marital problems. This is how you fight. Yeah. You single and you want to be married? This is how you fight. Your children acting up? This is how you fight. Problems on your job? This is how you fight. Your enemies coming against you? This is how you fight. It doesn't matter what is what you are dealing with. The answers are all right here. This is your cheat sheet. Oh All you have to do is turn to the back, to the concordance, and look up whatever it is. Healing, sadness, depression, money, finances, marriage, children, and it's right there. Find the scripture. Go to the scripture. Get a highlighter. Highlight it. Get your notebook. Write the scripture down on a sticky note. Have it there in front of you. Meditate on it, Joshua 1 and 8. Yes. Day and night, yes. you'll make your way prosperous yes. and have Good success. Good. It all starts in the mind. Right. Right you don't have to stay at the pool of Bethesda for 38 days, that for 38 years, 38 months, 38 days, 38 minutes or seconds. You can get up now. from that now. place now. right now. now. Yes, sir. He doesn't want you to be there. But the question is, do you want to move? Do you want to be well? Amen. Or do you like it there? Because you like the attention. Yeah, yeah, yes. Let people give you attention for good things. Amen. How about I'm feeling great today? Amen. Right, right, right. Amen. How about I got good news this week? I get tired of getting text messages on Sunday with this is wrong and that is wrong and this is wrong and that. I don't want to hear that on Sunday morning. Some things need to go right for you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me give you attention for good things. That's right. Man. Thank on. Thank, Thank on these things. Right. Psalm 142, 1 through 4. I'm almost finished. So I'm trying to hurry. Psalm 142, 1 through 4. Is this helping anybody? Yes, yes. Psalm 142. Yes, yes, yes. Psalm 142. You, you don't have to be there. You have the power to shake yourself out of that place. And let me tell you something. None of us are above it. We all face those challenges. Oh, yeah. But you have the power to step out of it. None of us are paralyzed. And when the enemy tries to paralyze you spiritually, God has given you a mouth. But the problem is, if you don't have the word of God in your heart, you can't use your mouth to fight with the word. You have to have the word of God, nigh thee, even in your mouth. That's it, that's it, that's it. Apostle Paul, yes sir. 142. Uh, one through four says, I cry aloud to who? Aloud, to the Lord. To the Lord. N not dialing your pastor. Come on. Not calling elder. Come on. Come on. <laughs> not calling evangelist or minister. Come on. I cry aloud to the Lord. I plead aloud, I plead aloud to the Lord for mercy. For mercy. I pour out my complaint before who? The Him. Lord. Lord. Not Facebook. The Lord. People do that because they want attention. attention. Yeah, 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 that's it. Yes. Oh, this head hurts. Oh, the marriage. Oh, these children getting on my nerve. On Facebook. What are they going to do for you? But screenshot it and text it to somebody and laugh at you behind your back, but then post on Facebook the emoji praying hand. Maybe they're not praying for you. They're praying against you. They're talking about you behind your back. Where is your discernment? Amen. I reveal my trouble to who? The Lord. To him. Uh -huh. Amen. Although my spirit is weak within me, you know my way. Yes, Lord. Along this path I travel, they have hidden a trap for me. Look to the right and see. No one stands up for me. Have you ever felt that way? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have you ever felt that way? Like, Lord, where are the people who defend me? I defend everybody else. But where are the people who defend me? My Lord. I was in a situation recently 
while I was trying to help somebody. And it got twisted and turned against me where they said I was being malicious and it broke my heart. And I saw somebody else that I work with and I said, did you speak up for me? Because I'm the one who speaks up for everybody else. I said, did you speak up for me? You know me. Did, did, you, did you say anything on my behalf? And her response was, I tried, but she didn't want to hear it. She's in her own head. Sometimes you feel like no one speaks up for you. But God is the defender of the brethren. That's right. Thank you, Lord. Your post, he's the defender of the brethren. Yes, when is. you're misunderstood. Yes, the, the worst feeling is being misunderstood. Yes. Yes. When your heart is in a good place and you're trying to do a good thing. The Bible says every time I try to do good, evil is always lurking, yes. present. Come on, but God is the defender of the brethren. He is my attorney. Come on. He is my defender. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. And he doesn't charge me a fee. He comes to see about me. Always. I was I was getting ready for work one day, and I said, Lord. I said, this is why I always wanted a big sister. And the Lord said, but if you had a big sister, that would have put your mom in a pretty bad predicament. And I started laughing and I said, yeah, God, you're right. Amen. And then he said, but this is why you, all of your friends are older than you. And I said, God, you're right. Because this is how me and God talk, right? Yeah, he's, he's my friend, yes. He's my friend. Yes, he is. All of my friends are significantly older than me. I have a few that are my age, like me and my cousin. But for the most part, they're well into their 50s. And some of them are in their 60s. And I'm 48. They're significantly older than me. And I never could figure this out until the Holy Spirit revealed it to me like three weeks ago. And I'm like, huh, that's why you're God and I'm not, because you're, you're smarter than me. He knows things I don't know. Amen. Yes, this is why we need to have a prayer life. Because right. see, we want to go to a therapist, but he's the best therapist. Yes. And going to a therapist is great, but he'll reveal things to you that your therapist will never know. He'll, he'll tell you things about yourself that you never knew. Yes, he will. Oh, yes. He'll tell you things about yourself that your mom and your daddy can't figure out, but he can figure out because he's all-knowing. And when he said that to me, I was able to stand a little bit taller and say, Oh, I got big sisters now. And I felt better. I have people who can defend me. He says, look to the right and see no one stands up for me. There is no refuge. No one cares about me. This is how the man at the pool of Bethesda felt. As if no one stood up for him and no one cared for him. These are the thoughts that the enemy will put in your yes, head. Yes, 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 yes. But you have an advocate with the Father. You have a defender Jesus. in the Father. This is why Jesus went on the cross for you, to defend you and to stand up for you. And this is why he said in Psalms 24, lift up your head. Oh, yeah. I'll lift you up. What does the song say? He lifts me up. Lifts me up. Yes. He is your strength. Yes, he is. Strength like, oh, like no other. He can lift you up when you can't lift up yourself. How does he do that? Through the word. Yes. How does that work? The word has to be nigh thee, even in your mouth. It has to be hidden in your heart. But it all starts in the mind. Do you want to be made well? Do you want to be well? Do you want to be Jonah 2 and 7 and I'm closing. Jonah 2 and 7, and I'm closing. I pray that this is blessing you. Jonah 2 and 7. Thank you, Lord. 
Jonah 2 and 7 says, as my life was fading away, I remembered the Lord. Yes. And my prayer came to you, to my holy temple. To your, and my prayer came to you, to your holy temple. Those who cherish worthless, worthless idols abandon their faithful love. But as for me, I will sacrifice to you with a voice of thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. I will fulfill what I have vowed. Salvation belongs to the Lord. To the Lord. Yes. yes, yes, yes. He says, as my life was fading away, I remember the Lord. And my prayer came to you, to your holy temple. When you're in that desolate place, you have to remember the Lord. It is him who can pull you up and put you into that pool of Bethesda. It is he who can put you into that place of healing. Thank you, Lord. This is why we have to lean and depend on him. Yes, yes, yes. This is why we have to trust in him and lean not on our own understanding, on our own knowledge, on our own wisdom, on our own words, on our own intellect. We have to rely on this book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spirit. B I B L E. Bib Biblical instructions before leaving Amen. earth. Yes, yes, yes. This is it. This is the answer. This is what we have to lean and yes, to pitch yes, on. Yes, yes. Having a friend and to being able to hear their voice is wonderful. But when you turn these pages and the voice of the Lord illuminates, the word of the Lord just lights up on the page. And you're like, that's what I needed right there. Thank you, Jesus. And all of a sudden, you feel better. It's like you took a dose of something. Because, see, this is medicine. Yes. Yes. His word is medicine. Yes. It brings yes. healing. Yes. He is the balm in Gilead. Yes. Yes. There's healing for your soul. There's healing for your soul in the word of God. I can be hidden in the word of God from this big bad world. You remember the story of the three little pigs when the big bad wolf came. Said little pigs, little pigs, let me come in. And they said, not by the hair on my chinny chin chin. The wolf said, then I'll huff and I'll puff. And I'll blow your house down. I can go to the word of God. And I said, not because of the blood. You can't blow my house down. Because of the blood of Christ, I'm anchored in him. Yes. You can't get into my house because of the blood of Christ. You see, the blood of Christ has been plastered on your forehead. Yes. His thumbprint is on your forehead. Yes. It's on the forehead of my children. It's on the forehead of my body. It's on the forehead of my house, of my vehicles, of my mind, of my businesses, of my church family. It tells somebody, it's on me. Yes. Therefore, the enemy can't touch me. He can try to come near me, but he can't touch me. What did the Lord tell the devil about Job? He said, you can touch his stuff, but don't come near him. He'll let him come, but so far and no more. Because you've been covered by the blood of Christ. Isaiah 54 and 17 applies to you that no weapon that is formed against you is able to prosper and every tongue that rises up against you in judgment shall be condemned for this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Are you a servant of the Lord? I receive it, yes. Yes, I receive it. Thank you for the word. When it says this is the heritage, then it means that this is what belongs to you. This is what this is what is due to you. That's right. It's yours. Uh -huh. Thank you, Lord. Do you want to be well? Everybody stand. Well. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for your words. Yes. Yes. Thank, thank you so much. Well.
Yes, 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 yes. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. I am well. I am. I don't want to be well. I am well. I am healed. In Jesus' name. Everybody say that. I am well. I am well. I am well. I am well. Glory be to God. I am well. In every area of my life. I am well. Say that. In every area of my life. I am well. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Come on, push your hand.